Welcome to the Mystic Access Podcast, where the magic is in learning. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the April 6th, 2021 episode of the Mystic Access Podcast. She's Kim. He's Chris. And we have an exciting castle segment that we're going to have for you. But before we do that, we just wanted to talk a little bit about some other events, such as the sale that's coming up this weekend. It is our famous birthday sale. So one of the two of us is having a birthday. (laughs) What we're going to do is starting Friday at midnight, we're going to have 10% off of hardware, 15% off of trainings, and 20% off of tutorials. So your tutorials will be 20% off, your trainings will be 15% off, and your hardware will be 10% off. Now, there are a couple of exceptions. Because of partners that we work with, there are a couple of things that can't be discounted. One is the blind shell phone, and the other is the Evo E10 audio player. However, if you want to buy the Evo documentation by itself, You can certainly do that, and you will get the discount that way. Yes, you will. So that's another way to get a hold of the Evo documentation before purchasing the product, should you wish to. Yeah, we know it's a bigger investment, and if you want to learn more about it prior to ordering, that is a good way to do it, and you will save some change over the course of this weekend. This sale, just so you're aware, runs from Friday morning all the way through Sunday night. So you've got three days to take advantage, and the sale will end at, what, 11.59 p.m. on Sunday? (laughs) Something like that, yes. For some reason, we like to do 11.59 p.m. for the end time. So that's a fun event. Speaking of events, though, we do have a class coming up later in April. We do not yet know its topic, however. We've got multiple deadlines that we're hitting right now. We have a lot of stuff going on on the back end, and we just haven't had time between us to sit down and discuss it. So we will come up with something great, as we always try to do, and something that will be of interest to you guys. So we will definitely let you know in the next episode what will be going on for April's free event. We will also tell you in the next episode, as a little tease, something that's been taking up some of our time. Yep. Another event. (laughs) An event later this summer. An event later this summer. So if you know, keep it a secret from your friends. (laughs) So for this castle segment, we sat down with a couple guys we've gotten to know very well. Andrew Flatters and Peter Tusick from Humanware. And we discussed the new brilliant BIX line of displays. There's a 20 cell and a 40 cell model. And we just may have had some involvement with that project. (laughs) If you want to learn more about these Braille displays, you certainly want to listen to this interview we did with Peter and Andrew. And you also can go check out our documentation, which is available for both models. It's available on our site. It's available through Humanware's site. And we will also link in the show notes to a few things that are mentioned in this castle segment, including the HW Buddy app and the links for the Braille displays themselves on Humanware's website. So as usual, this is a fun, insightful castle segment. We know we just had a castle segment, so we hope you're enjoying these, and we really hope you enjoy this one. Welcome to the Mystic Access Magic Castle. Welcome back to another segment in the Mystic Access Magic Castle, and the castle is full today. We have not one, but two guests from Humanware. Peter Tusick and Andrew Flatters are joining us for a fun, lively discussion, as I know it will be, on the Brilliant BIX line of products, the Brilliant BI20X and Brilliant BI40X, which were recently released by Humanware. And we are super excited to be sharing about them, partly because we have our own little piece of this Brilliant Pie, which has been a delight to be part of, as usual, when our Humanware collaborations happen. So we are delighted to have you guys with us. Welcome. Oh, thanks very much. It's delightful to be here. I mean, uh, Peter and I, we come as a package. You know, you, you buy yeah. one, you get one free. There you <laughs> no, go. Isn't I that think great? I'm the free one because Are remember, Andrew, one? Andrew legitimizes this castle, right? <laughs> uh, yes, he does. Yes. Most definitely. <laughs> it's great to be on here again. Yeah, great it's to really, be really nice to be here. Great to have you guys. So where do we want to begin? Tell us about the brilliant products, this new incarnation. 
Well, yeah, we've launched recently uh, Brilliant 20X and the Brilliant BI 40X. So this is our, our new Braille display ranges from HumanWare. And this is to replace the, the predecessor of Brilliant. Those that remember the, the older Brilliant BIs, we had a 40 and we had a 32 cell. We've continued with a 40 cell. Uh, but we've introduced a smaller device, the 20 cell. And what we have brought to the table here is not just the Braille display allowing you to connect to a screen reader to Braille input and receive Braille, but we've included some intelligence into our devices. As we know in the field, we expect that people want to achieve more tasks and they want to be more productive. So it's not just about connecting to a screen reader, but they want to do things that that they can do in-house on this device quickly, simple, and effectively. So we've introduced smart intelligence, which we're calling Keysoft Lite. And for those that are familiar with Keysoft, it brings some Keysoft applications, but in a lighter form. When I say lighter form, this, these devices bring in productive tools such as a keypad. Now, the keypad is an editor application, but don't expect a full-on note taker experience here. I mean, we're not saying that the notepad is to replace your word processor on your computer, not at all. The primary use case for a Braille display is to use it with a screen reader and use Microsoft Word, etc. But we have added the ability to quickly make some notes in a meeting, perhaps, or if you're in a, on a train or traveling somewhere, if you're fortunate to travel somewhere these days, you can make some quick notes and you can open some notes that you can edit. So it's not a full-on word processor, and I want to make that clear. That's something that we have been getting very positive feedback on on our intelligence display, but expecting to use this word processor or notepad as a full-on word processor. Absolutely, um, and I, I think to kind of take it a step further, when we think of the other applications as well, there is an onboard calculator. The device also has Wi-Fi, so there are some other pieces that bring in the intelligence, but it is not you know, the calculator is a four function calculator. The Wi-Fi gives us access to free over the air updates. It gives us access to online libraries and things we've never seen in a device, but we're not getting email. We're not getting a web browser. We're not getting that full fledged note taker side of things, but we are getting a hybrid intelligent sort of braille display side and the original feedback. And I know obviously Kim has had one of these in her hands. She made, <laughs> they made you guys make such great <laughs> tutorials. So <laughs> But the, the feedback has been very positive and we're really looking to kind of reimagine what a Braille display can do. And we're almost on the verge of our 1.1 update as well. So the updates will be coming and features will be added, which I know we'll dive into. And when we looked at and we listened to the feedback from our customers over the last 10 years. So when we hear Brilliant BIX series, the BI stands for Braille input. The X stands for 10 years. We've had 10 years of our own Brilliant. Before that, we did have other products with the Brilliant name, but in terms of the humanware Brilliant side of things, the X is 10 years. And over those 10 years, the feedback was, we love the product, we love the durability, we love the connectivity, but we need intelligence. We need to have more of a productivity device. And so we've really tried to bring that in both in the hardware. So if we think of the hardware side of things, and we can kind of dive into Amandi in terms of the differences, but if we look at the BI40 per se, we are the first Braille display to have Bluetooth 5.0. That will certainly give us a stronger connection, a connection at further distances, more stable. And, you know, it, it becomes a, a numbers game at that point, two times stronger or four times greater distance or, or what it may be. But we're about using that modern standard. So the, the Brilliant BI40X will have Bluetooth 5. It will also have the Wi-Fi capability of connecting to 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks and when it comes to wireless. And so, again, we're trying to keep up with what is modern, what is out there, what is in your home, what are you using kind of as part of your daily workflow. And that's what we looked for in it. So the productivity will certainly increase. The BI40 has audio that will be active as we move forward. So the support will be added via a free update over Wi-Fi. We can kind of toss around what that means, but there are stereo speakers on the Brilliant BI40. So when audio is made available, that will be able to support that, which is great. And it also has a microphone that will be activated. And our ultimate goal is to bring in some sort of functionality where you could record audio notes, maybe a phone number, maybe a lecture, something like that. Again, pushing that envelope forward. And Andy, do you want to comment on that audio side of things as to really just what that may mean when it is brought in? Yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah. I mean, audio has a, a very wide spectrum and people think TTS, for example, would fall under the audio. Now, I'm not here to say that TTS will or will not be available. 
But the first thing that we would look at introducing when we look at audio is the possibilities of playing back audio books. So when we look at reading books, we have several options. We have reading some textbooks on Braille, but then there's also the option of maybe that textbook isn't available in that particular novel that you're after. So, but it is available in an audio form. So you could grab that, maybe it's an MP3, maybe it's a certain audio file. So that's the direction that we are looking at in the short term. We are looking to play back audio files, very much like the Victor Reader stream that everyone loves. The ability to play and read different mediums to give you a wider sort of um, directions of, of, of what you can read and what you can listen to. That will be the first scope. Then, of course, there'll be questions about the TTS, I'm sure. But uh, I'm not here to say that it's going to be available. I'm not here going to say it's not going to be available, but certainly audio. We're going to look at playing back audio files and, of course, being, having the ability to record audio notes using the microphone and playing those back. That's nice. It just adds to the ability to enjoy that reading pleasure or that listening pleasure even more. And especially when you've already got stuff like NFB Newsline, Bookshare, Bard Braille on board already, you can just add to that. And so there may be more that you will be able to do eventually in terms of that while still being able to use Braille on this fantastic little device with reading your favorite stuff. You're absolutely right, Kim. I mean, when it comes to libraries, as of right now, your Wi-Fi connectivity will be to NLS Bard, the Braille catalog, as you mentioned. It will be to Bookshare, and it will also be to NFB Newsline. We realize and we know those are very U.S.-centric libraries. Now, if you look at a product like the Victor Reader Stream or you know devices that we have out there that connect to other online libraries, we have a global reach. So we will be adding libraries in the near future because we know that we have more users than just those who may be listening in North America here in the States. We have users in Canada, all over Europe, you know, all over Australia and other parts of the world who are looking for access to their libraries that they may rely on. And that's certainly uh, going to be a focus of ours. And that will be brought into the fold. That's excellent. And then, of course, we have technology like that available in the BrailleNote Touch line of products, like language profiles, being able to change that up a bit and make that exactly customizable to what you want. Yeah, and, and the idea of you know some of the features that are, are featured in the the brilliance, and when we're calling it and, and name this key soft light, it's it's to really get that similar feel. It's that environment that people love to be in. And there's a number of people there, and I remember going many many years ago about key soft. Key soft really is what the user is interacting with. It's their user experience. And we need to make that seamlessly. We need to make it easier and intuitive for that end user. So what you'll know from any pre-Keysoft device, whether it be an Empower, an Apexes, a Classics, Braille Notes, for those who remember, if you're used to that environment, then transition to a Braille display can be made a little bit more easier. So it has the traditional commands that are well used in all of our brow notes on the brow note touch we have our language profiles switching between those language profiles is identical to what how switching to your profiles on the braille display as well so we are bringing that whole environment together the whole key soft feel um, so that you can transition from one device to another more easier absolutely and i have to comment and I, I know i said this to andy when i first saw it on the keyboard and the typing action of this thing. I don't know what it is about this line, but it is one of the most comfortable keyboards that I have typed on in terms of Perkins style keyboard. I just love it. I wouldn't say it's almost silent, but in terms of typing on a Perkins style keyboard, you can't get much better than this in terms of how quiet it is. It's just a very seamless experience. So we definitely had a lot of feedback, especially on the 40 cell unit with what our previous brilliant, what the space bar was like. And we really sought to address that in this with improving the key travel of the space bar so that they're more, I guess the word would be gentle. They're not so clicky. They certainly have a better feel. There still are two of them and they are on the front edge of that Braille display, much like they were on the previous model. But we took a lot of, and and I know there were different incarnates of it, so we finally settled on one and we've gotten a lot of positive feedback. And both the 20 and 40X will have very quiet keys. We're we're not about clickety-clack of the railroad track. We certainly want you to be subtle when you're taking notes, when you're working, when you're reading. That's not to say that the display is entirely completely silent. You certainly will hear when you push a button or hear when a braille display, you know, if you're just reading along, it's going to be very similar to what we had in any previous product up to this point over the last several years. But we really wanted to improve that sort of space bar typing experience. And we, we are, we're certain that, that we've done it and the feedback's been very positive. So it's nice to hear you say that. 
Yeah, Braille pens by their very nature are not going to allow for silent reading, but you've gotten yeah. it pretty much as close as you can get, I think, in terms of that keyboard. Yeah. So what kind of internal storage is on each one of these devices? Is it the same? Well, maybe let's let's just ba- touch base on some of the differences from a hardware point of view as well here. If we look at the 20X, now the 20X uh, internal memory has 16 gigabytes. Uh, So it has quite a substantial amount of internal storage, but you have the possibility of connecting to a USB and you have the possibility of connecting to an SD card. So if you have run out of storage of 16 gigabyte, then you could use an external storage device, a USB or an SD card. If we look at the Brilliant BI40X, the storage is 32 gigabytes. So that does have a larger capacity of internal storage but only has an, a USB port. It does not have an SD port available. Okay, so it has more storage internally, but it does not have an SD card uh, socket on the Brilliant BI-40. Back to the 20X, some other difference in the hardware, as Peter mentioned, the Wi-Fi. So there are some differences in the Wi-Fi support. So the 20X supports Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz, and the Brilliant BI-40X supports 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So again, some differences there. On the 40X, we have stereo speakers and we have an added microphone. On the 20X, we only have a mono speaker. We don't have stereo and we do not have a microphone. And of course, the command keys. So on the Brilliant BI40X, we have six command keys. So free either side of the Braille display. On the Brilliant BI20X, we do not have any command keys. The That's, other piece that I'll, yep. that I'll add where they are the same and, and the software is identical on both from a USB-C standpoint. So the charging cable is USB-C. It's what we're using to charge the device, which is really your standard today for many products. That also works if you plug the device into your PC, it's gonna show up as a mass storage device. So if you don't want to use a thumb drive in that USB type A port, or if you don't want to use your SD card slot on the uh, 20 cell unit, you can certainly plug it into your computer and just move files back and forth that way using Windows File Explorer. So that's a great thing. It, It will show up even if you're using a screen reader with it that is nice there's another display on the market that i actually have that you have to go into a specific mode in order to turn on mass storage and then go back out of that mass storage mode to go back to using your screen reader so that right and and one nice nice thing about that is you know it, it in addition i mean just being able to move files back and forth but then also internally you certainly do have a full file manager allowing you to move files from you know internally you can create folders again you're working in that editor the editor will save files as text format you can open a variety of file formats but you can certainly put that onto an sd card if you're using a 20x or a usb drive if you're using a 20 or 40 and you can move that right to your computer so it does have it internally but then it's nice to have the external mass storage options as well absolutely you've got a variety from which to choose I also really like the fact that you can customize your menu on these, which is kind of cool if there are certain applications that you just know you're not going to use or you want to kind of avoid for whatever reason. Then you have the option to just take them off and you won't have to worry about them. Right. And and I think where that also will come into play is let's say you don't have a, maybe you're not a Bookshare user um, yep. or we add other libraries and you say, well, I'm never going to use RNIB library or something. And you'll say, you know, I want to hide those from my unit or you want to enable others. And this is great for education, right? You don't need, maybe you don't want a date and time or to see the user guide on that main menu, or maybe you just want to hide some of those libraries. So you can really simplify that device down into just being terminal and editor or terminal and calculator or whatever it may be, where you can, you know, quickly move between your available sort of applications. And if you ever need to turn those back on at any point in time, you can certainly do so. Absolutely. And speaking of which, of course, for those familiar with humanware products of the past, you also have that seamless first letter navigation ability as well. Anywhere you want to go, you hit the letter, you're there. And also to touch note on on the Keysoft side of things, we have our contextual menu, which we know people love from our predecessor of of Brown Notes uh, and uh, other Keysoft enabled apps is if you do get stuck, then you simply can press your contextual menu or you can bring it up by pressing space and the letter M. And you'll be in a list of all available actions of what you can do at that given time. And it's a great learning tool. I mean, even the experts of this device, if you forget something, you could just bring it up and you can action it right there from that contextual menu. So it's a great learning tool. Yeah, I'm still one of those people who will mistake a space command with a backspace command or an enter command. And I'll be like, which one of these is this? Oh, I can check the context menu. <laughs> there you go. 
Nothing like the Modifier Confusion. I think that'd be a good name for a podcast. I like that. Modifier Confusion. confusion. We might just steal that one for this one. (laughs) (laughs) So let's talk a bit about connectivity. We were alluding to it a bit earlier. What can you tell us about what people will be able to do with this in terms of connectivity? In terms of connectivity, on the Brennit BI 40X, we are using the first of its kind on, on our Braille refreshable displays, Bluetooth 5. And what Bluetooth 5 will bring is that solid, reliable connection. So when you're using this with a screen reader, whether it's using a computer, whether you're using voiceover, you know that having that stronger connection, it's not going to let you down at those times when you need it the most, right? So that's where the Bluetooth 5 comes into action. It gives you that a a lot better and a stable connection of Bluetooth 5. When we talk about downloading of books or reading books on this device, again, this is a first of a kind on the Braille display, accessing directly to online libraries. We're using Wi-Fi. And on the Braille BI 40X, you can connect to the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz network to download your books directly from Bookshare, NFB Newsline, or NLS BART, more libraries, of course, will, will soon follow. But you can access those libraries and download those books using the Wi-Fi. Not only does the Wi-Fi cater for downloading the books, it's also used for updating. And we will have some future updates, and I'm sure we'll come on to that in just a moment. So when there's an update available, you'll get a notification to say there's a new update available, would you like to download? So the Wi-Fi is used for the two things that currently, the downloading of books and, of course, updating your firmware. The same with the Braille BI 20X has the same capabilities. So you can connect again via Bluetooth. It doesn't have the Bluetooth 5 on the 20X. It has Bluetooth 4.2, which is good. Of course, it's still good. It's still solid. It still gives you a very good, reliable connection. So again, if you want to use your Bluetooth connection, you can do so connecting to your screen readers. You also have Wi-Fi and to connect to Wi-Fi, you only can connect to the 2.4 gigahertz network, not the 5 gigahertz network. And if Bluetooth is not your thing that you want to connect to, then of course you have your USB-C. And if you want to connect to your screen readers that way, by all means you can do. USB-C connection is available for you on both the BI20X and the 40X to connect to your screen readers on a computer. How many devices can you connect at one time? Say you had an iOS device and a computer or what have you. How many of those can you connect at one time? Yeah, great question. So you can connect to five Bluetooth connection and one USB. So all in all, six in total, you can switch between multiple devices on the fly. So let's say you're working on a document on your computer and the phone just vibrates and you want to read the text message that comes in. You can switch between your computer device back to your iPhone and then read the message that's just come through and then go back to your computer. So switching between your devices can work seamlessly. And what do we have currently available in terms of supported mobile devices? I know we can do iOS. So in terms of screen reader support, so iOS, of course, is up there. We support the JAWS 18 and above. We also support Supernova. Currently, we're still, oh yeah, we're supporting NVDA, uh, but we're still needing to work with Google, so the Android and Chrome, which should be upcoming. And Chrome, I expect, will be supported in, let's say, two months or so, I like to say. Don't hold me against that. But I think Chrome will certainly come before the Android support. Will Fire end up getting that? Or is that a whole different kettle of fish with Amazon? Yeah, these are very good questions in terms of what other screen readers will be supported. And because the Braille displays are are using the, the new Braille protocol that was published and pushed by a lot of the manufacturers, a lot of the brown manufacturers and a lot of the organizations such as Apple and Microsoft, it's using a different type of communication to connect to our screen readers. And some of those screen readers today do not support it, unfortunately. So if we look at the Fire operating system, that does not yet support the new Braille here protocol. The same with Android, and I'm told Android will soon support that. The same goes with Narrator because they're using the same Braille TTY package, they're unable to support the new Braille here protocol at this moment in time. So at the moment, the only platform that's using this new protocol is Apple. And, and that's what we're, uh, we're, we're pushing towards that. A better communication. And I'm hoping that every screen reader will come on board with us on that journey. But in the meantime, we are able to support 
said Chrome will be supported from a USB point of view. Narrator hopefully will follow again from a USB, but Bluetooth may be a challenge because they need to support that new Braille protocol. As we have done in the past, we have created the tutorial for the Braille Note Touch, and Kim has done an outstanding job at creating audio tutorials or documentation, as we like to say, because our tutorials aren't really tutorials. They're more like audio documentation. But she has done an awesome job at creating the audio documentation for these two devices. And I know when she was doing it, she was having a little bit of fun, probably too much fun, but that's okay. I like playing with new toys before most people get to see them. That part's fun. I must say, I mean, I don't even think they're audio documentations. First of all, they're exquisite because what they do is you can tell Kim has fun with them. And it's regardless of the products. I mean, you guys have made tutorials for all kinds of things and they're all extremely yeah. well done. And what Kim does is she is able to perfectly put herself in a user's shoes and deconstruct what it is that a user needs to do. And we always appreciate that. And I create lots of material as does Andrew and we do webinars. I do how to videos or I write up guides, but I do not do anywhere near the level and the intricacies of what you do, Kim and Chris, in what you put together with your tutorials. So it is much appreciated. And we strongly encourage anybody who does not have a product yet to listen to these, to really get a sense of what the product is, what the product does as we update the product, what it will do, you know, when updates come into play, because you certainly not only create these, but you keep them updated over time. And so I would, I, I've already encouraged those who, who are prospective users or who want to learn more about it to listen to what you guys have put together, because it's a great way to learn about the devices. Thanks. We always enjoy it. It's so much fun. So what can you tell us about or not of what's coming <laughs> in the not too distant future? We can certainly give you a bit of a heads up on, on what's coming. I think the first thing to, to mention is the flexibility on what file types this device already supports, right? So these Brilliant BIX series support many, many different file types from DOC to DOCX to BRF. You name it, it supports a various different amount of file formats because it utilizes the onboard Braille translation to translate the text into Braille on the fly. So what we are bringing in the next upcoming version is support to PDF. So PDF is quite a common file type nowadays. It's been used alongside DOCX in a number of different places. So PDF support is well up there and it's, it's certainly a big request from a lot of our users. So we are now allowing the ability to open PDF files on the keypad editor. So you can open them up in the editor and it would straight away translate into text and you can make some changes. And then of course, the Victor Reader application that's on board, you'll be able to open them up in a read only and read those PDF files as well. But please note, of course, there will be some limitations on, on the file size. So we will be allowing up to 200 megabytes of a PDF file to be opened in the Victor Reader application. So that's the number one that we're going to include. Second to that then is the government mode, which is only available upon request. So we are releasing a government mode. It's a special mode for those places of where they need a Braille display that uh, is, you're in a secure environment. So they don't need the Bluetooth or they're not allowed Bluetooth, they're not allowed Wi-Fi, no intelligence whatsoever. They just want a real dumbed down Braille display to allow them to connect on a USB port to have Braille input and Braille output. And that's a government mode that we're introducing. And this will be only available upon request. So in the production, they'll have to program the device into a government mode and send that out. And unfortunately, from the end user, you will not be able to unlock any new features, you'll be stuck in that mode. That's just something that we've created for our government agencies, as we know that a lot of people will work in these places in secured environment, they need to have access to Braille. What's the next one, Peter? Another big piece, and, and this is something that has been asked for for quite some time, and we think about this as a, as a productivity device. So sometimes maybe you're reading a book or somebody says, hey, I need you to write this number down, or whatever it may be. There's a, going to be a global shortcut to create a new blank note in the editor. So no matter where you are, obviously when you're in the terminal, this will not apply. You need to hit your home button and leave your active terminal connection. But if you're anywhere on the unit, there is going to be a global shortcut to create a new note, which we think will be easy. You don't have to come to the main menu and find the editor and go to create or whatever it may be. So you're going to be able to globally create a new blank file to quickly and efficiently take a note. And then obviously you would save that and away you go, but it's a nice global shortcut. 
And in addition to that, we've made some small improvements. And this really relates to, let's say, more the younger Braille learners that want to use a refreshable Braille display at times. So sometimes the challenge that you'll get is it's either in contracted Braille or it's either in uncontracted. You know, how can someone who's learning contracted Braille work with this device and use this device to learn contracted Braille? So one of the things that we can currently do today is you can toggle between your different Braille tables. So you can toggle between uncontracted, contracted, and computer Braille. But of course, at the moment, computer Braille gets in the way. Not many people would use computer Braille in this situation. So what we've allowed to do now is you're allowed to set certain tables to none. So if you set your computer Braille table to none, when you toggle between uncontracted and contracted, that's all that you're toggling between. You're not toggling between three different tables at this stage. So it's really useful if you're in a document, you've come across a contracted word that you're not familiar with. You can quickly press backspace and G, toggles you into uncontracted Braille, and you'll see that word in grade one. So again, a really useful way of utilizing these onboard Braille tables and a way of self-learning, you could say, you know, a way that you can self-learn what a uncontracted word looks like in contracted form. I love that. It's all about increasing literacy and any way to make those tips and tricks happen faster and be able to figure that out more (laughs) quickly is always appreciated for those new people, I am sure. Plus, if I were one of those new people, it would keep me from having to remember that backspace space G command (laughs) that people can get hung up on from the computer braille toggle. So that's fun. (laughs) And then I guess the last piece really then is just the localization. This probably isn't for your audience at this stage, but we've added some uh, extra localization on this device, uh, Czech, Dutch, Polish, Portuguese, Brazil, could be one, uh, Slovenian and Spanish. Well, we definitely got some people from all around the world. So I'm sure some of them would appreciate hearing that news indeed. So that is great to know. Well, the great thing is these updates and enhancements that we're bringing are all free and we will continue to bring up future enhancements. We certainly listen to a lot of our audience. A lot of these features that have been brought up today are actually from users. You know, users mentioned that they want PDF, that they want other things on this device. So please keep them coming. There is also a list that you can join. Peter, are you able to tell us that list? Absolutely. So I have created a brilliant BIX user group. It's a groups.io list that certainly anybody is welcome to join. You can post any questions or suggestions and or certainly just watch the messages go by as a lot of us tend to do on these user groups that we may be in. Both myself and Andrew participate when and where we can. So we do look at the list and we've heard a lot of great feedback and suggestions from the list. And so if you'd like to subscribe, you can send a blank message to the following email address. And I'm sure we can get this in the show notes too. Yep, absolutely. It's it's going to be brilliant. So that's B-R-A-I-L-L-I-A-N-T dash B-I dash X dash users. So brilliant B-I X users, all separated by dashes, the plus sign and the word subscribe at groups.io. So again, brilliant BIX users plus subscribe at groups.io and you'll be able to register for the list. So feel free to do that. It's very similar to any other groups.io list that you may be a member of and that will be in the show notes as well. And you can certainly come join us on our venture and we've had a lot of good feedback. We're certainly almost into the triple digit range in terms of and the product has been out for about a month. So growing day by day and we would love to see you on the list if you would like to join us and talk about the product or provide suggestions or feedback. It's always welcome and Andrew and I both very much appreciate it. So if people have been made curious by this presentation, which we, of course, hope you have, how does one learn more about the Brilliant BIX series? What we would encourage you to do is to come to our website. So www.humanware, H-U-M-A-N-W-A-R-E.com. And when you're on our website, if you bring yourself into a links list or use your rotor and find links and go to the support link, and once you activate support, there will be a brilliant BIX page there where you can both access the wonderful Mystic Access audio tutorials, you can look at the FAQs, you are able to find the user guides there, as well as, you know, the software when it's up. If you don't want to download it over Wi-Fi, you can certainly find it there as well. And then I've done a lot of audio snapshot type of tutorials as well, and there will be more coming. Alternatively, if you have an iOS or Android device, you can download the HW, as in humanware, HW Buddy application from your Play Store or iOS App Store, and you can find relevant information in that app as well.
um, including you know our how-to guides. Those are more in text, sort of text how-to step-by-steps, as well as video tutorials, or you can contact support directly through that app as well. So that is our mobile application. Again, HW Buddy. HW standing for humanware. Ooh, and particularly if you have multiple humanware devices and you like being on your mobile device to gain support for said devices, HW Buddy is a really cool option because you've got a whole bunch of stuff. It's kind of a one-stop shop for multiple devices. Absolutely. And any of our webinars will be archived when we update devices, we can push notifications. Of course, that's something you opt into with any mobile app. But if you choose to receive notifications from the HW Buddy app, you will never miss a product update because we will push what that product is right to the app. Depending on what time this podcast becomes available, you may have enough time to register for the upcoming webinar, which is also on Tuesday the 6th <laughs> at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So depending on what time or how long you've got until that uh, until that starts. But that's our next right. It's going to be like webinar. a race. Which, which yeah. do you get to first? <laughs> which do you get to we, first? We will always yes. have more live webinars. Andrew and I did a large amount of them last year during the beginning of the pandemic and such. And we will bring... Not back to the level of two a week, but we will certainly be bringing back the live webinar feel for everybody out there as well. So 8 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday the 6th. You can check that out and and find out some more goodies. Gentlemen, as always, thank you so much for visiting us in our crazy castle. We always appreciate getting to chat with you about Humanware's newest innovations. Thank you. Thanks very much, Kim. Thanks, Chris. Thank you so much, guys. And just for the record, I am in the keep. That's where I am in the castle. I am in the keep. So if you need to look <laughs> of up, of course you are. <laughs> what part of the castle that is? That's where I am. I, you know, others may be dungeon. in different areas. I'm in the keep. <laughs> <laughs> is that the east wing at all, Peter? I don't know. I think it's in the middle somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your visit to the Mystic Access Magic Castle. You're welcome anytime. Thank you, everybody, for coming along and listening to us in the Mystic Access Magic Castle. And we shall see you in two weeks. Bye, everybody. Bye. The preceding podcast is a presentation of Mystic Access, where the magic is in learning. If you are blind or visually impaired and desire to discover how our comprehensive products and services may support and empower your assistive technology journey, we welcome your visit at www.mysticaccess.com. Have a question or wish to place an order via phone? Call us at 716-543-3323. If you have something to share about this podcast episode, press 4 to reach our Mystic Access podcast comment line. Email us at info at mysticaccess.com. Connect with us on Twitter at twitter.com slash mysticaccess. And like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash mysticaccessempower. Would you like to spread the word about our podcasts? Your friends and colleagues may listen and subscribe at www.mysticaccesspodcast.com. If you enjoy our episodes, consider leaving us an iTunes rating and review. Your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks for spreading the word, and thanks for being a listener. We hope you enjoyed this episode.